I was doing some research recently and I came across a GWR line I'd not heard of. I thought that was quite strange, the Badminton line. Then of course, after a bit more research, I realised well, this was the main South Wales route, London to South Wales. And I realised it tells an extremely quirky story. One of which I thought I'd share with you today. And of course, tick off all of the abandoned stations and features. So my name is Paul and welcome to the story of how GWR weren't very good at getting to South Wales. First stop of the day, after I've looked at this gorgeous viaduct, is Winterbourne. The first stop west to east on the line that we're taking after Bristol Parkway. So I think Winterbourne is up on the top of the ridge next to the viaduct. Let's go take a look. I think from the drone shots I've just got, I can see the old station building. That's station number one of today. Now, for those who've been watching the channel for quite a while, you'll know that I like to tick off abandoned stations and by my own calculations, I think there's 6,800. Got a big spreadsheet, took every station I could find from five different sources and uh, the document I think is still available online. If it isn't, I'll make it available. But I do stress that's my own calculations. So in the meantime, Winterbourne. Also, Today, I'm going to try, I've printed off in my folder just down here, a whole load of photos, old photos, and some a little bit more recent, of those abandoned stations that we're going to visit. And I'm going to try and see if I can sort of replicate those photos. That might be a bit of fun. Station number two of today, Colpit Heath. Probably gives you an idea of what happened here. And we'll have a quick look before we head on into today's story as we um, find our way across this little footbridge. Now this is the only, I think this is the only station from today where I haven't got an old picture. So we'll just have to imagine as it was. I think there's something else just the other side of here to show you as well. Right, Culpit Heath just down there where the old industrial estate was. I think even on the old map it says abandoned station, but there's nothing there to show whatsoever. Wow. So Coal Pit Heath sits next to Ram Hill Quarry. That all adds up. And uh, this is a scheduled monument now. Right here you've got where the um, horse jinny would have been and it would have pulled the, um, the miners down a shaft over there, and the shaft is 170 meters deep. The pathway we've just taken is called the Dramway, which tells you everything, and right here is an old tramway. Well, this is pretty exciting. Old stone blocks with the, um, the pins still in, leading up to, up to there. So the railway was built in 1903. Now the pit had closed here by then, so I guess there'd be no association between the railway and this railway. Fascinating little place. So where are we now and what is the context of this line? So 1840 in the south of England, the main GWR line is open between London and Bristol. The route chosen was relatively flat, with Brunel concerned about the gradient. However, what that did mean is it wasn't straight. A route up to Didcot and Swindon and then down to Chippenham and all the way across to Bath before back up into Bristol was required. If you wanted however to get to South Wales, well you could but you need to take a route up the Golden Valley line. 1845 and GWR take over this part built line and connect it up past Sirencester, Stroud, into Gloucester and your trip would then take you all the way back down that coastline into South Wales. GWR were now called the Great Way Round for good reason. They were not popular in South Wales. 15 years on, well things could possibly change now for GWR and their reputation because the Bristol and South Wales Union Railway, I think it was called, built a ferry, they had a ferry crossing 
and all of a sudden GWR had access to this. They could go north out of Bristol along to New Passage via Lower Pilning and you could embark on a ferry journey. That would negate the need for you to do all those miles up the Golden Valley line, Gloucester and then south again through Lydney. I'm not sure if that would have been for me a potential of a 50 foot tidal range ferry not sure how regular those crossings would have been. I think I still probably head north through Gloucester. You can see why GWR's reputation still wasn't great in South Wales. Now, just to my right here is my third station of the day, Chipping Sodbury. And I think this time I'm going to be able to recreate uh, the picture that's online. Not that old, unfortunately, the picture. And look at the size of the cutting that way back to Bristol and over here towards the east we've got the spot of the old station that was here So you've either got the Golden Valley long way round route or you've got the ferry still in action. Not ideal for freight and not ideal for people. 10 years on 1873 and GWR finally commit to crossing the Severn Estuary via their own steam. This time a tunnel opened in 1886. But the story wasn't to end here. It's the old Badminton station buildings are still there. Really beautiful, bet the old platform is still there as well. Um, hopefully they're not going anywhere, because they look apart. And we'll see if we can get a better shot from up here, but the good news is we'll definitely be able to do our comparing new for old on the picture. So I think we will. So we've arrived at the uh, site of the abandoned Hullivington railway station and I'm guessing there's not a lot left here. So instead of that, we'll focus back on the story where we're about to hear one of the most underhand tactics I've ever come across in railway history. But before I tell you that, I'll try and recreate the photo which I think was taken by the, the famous photographer Ben Brooksbank from just down there. Little Summerford, we're walking along a path, I think it's a pathway, adjacent to the main line. I think the station was around about here. Let's say there's no old pictures that I can actually see or use copyright free. So what happened next in the story? Well, there was a company called the Barry Railway Company in South Wales doing really well with the coal industry, but they still had issues with getting it across to, to England and to the south because they still had to go through Bristol. There was no direct route. So 1895, they and a few supporters came up with the South Wales and London, or the London and South Wales Railway, 1895. And it proposed a route through Thornbury, Malmesbury, three and a half thousand yard bridge. So almost immediately, oh, GWR came up with an alternative. They'd muted about it before, but now they've got the Act of Parliament for this railway, the Badminton Railway, the South Wales Main Line that is still here today. And of course, what did the Barry Rail Railway Company do? Well, they withdrew theirs almost immediately. And uh, now they had this route and they could use the GWR line for that reason. It was a direct route, it avoided Bristol, Bath. Brinkworth, I think the station would have been about here. Seem to have got a much better picture from up there. And we've got a nice old black and white photo to compare to this time. So hopefully I can do a like for like. Station number seven of the day, I've lost count now. And one thing I guess I've taken from today is there's plenty of room. It's such a shame there's no local services. Brinkworth, the longest village in England. Um, it's about two and a half miles long. Huge population here, eh? so. I don't know, could we not have a, uh, a railway service here? So this has been the story of how GWR failed to really get to grips with South Wales properly till quite late on. Hope you've enjoyed it, hope you've di discovered as many new stories and stations that I have today. It's been quite a nice journey. See you this time next Sunday.